big it is. The hardest bottom is here, and the top of it is about here somewhere. So it's about that wide, about, about that tall, and about from here to about here in width. So it's we're talking about something that's about this big. The fin whale's heart can weigh as much as 250 kilograms, as heavy as four humans. The lungs can inhale 2,000 liters of fresh air in a single breath. As whales have evolved, they've not only increased the volume of oxygen they can take in, but they also use it more efficiently. Here, at this deep water diving tank, freedivers are learning how to mimic the whale's techniques to help them hold their breath underwater. A human can't match the remarkable force a whale can use to refresh the air in its lungs. But these deep gulps help fill his body with far more oxygen than normal. When a whale dives, its streamlined shape and huge fins allow it to glide through the water. And free divers mimic this by using fins and keeping their arms tight to their chest. These effortless techniques lower the amount of oxygen they need, and so the heart rates of both these mammals drop by as much as 50%. Even so, oxygen is eventually used up, and after four minutes, this diver must rise to the surface. But the whale can keep going for another 30. That's because there's something else in its anatomy that allows the whale to get more out of the oxygen it takes in. Once that oxygen is in the bloodstream, it's circulated to the tissues, and the reason whale muscle is so dark, almost black in color, when you look at it, it's, it's very, very dark, is that it has myoglobin in it that holds on to that oxygen, it turns it very dark, and so you see more oxygen stored in these muscles than a terrestrial mammal would, so it doesn't build up an oxygen debt as quickly as a terrestrial mammal would, so they can go longer without breathing in between. It's getting quite frantic now because we're losing the light. They're trying very delicately to take off the lower jaw at the moment. That's this bit on me, obviously. There's two ray mile or, or arms of the jaw, one on either side. You can see them really clearly here. It's like a V shape. Down at the bottom here, you can see where the, the joint is, where it articulates. But they're going to lose the light. They are going to lose the light. By the way up. Before the sun sets, Joy wants to examine the anatomy of this whale's senses to see how they work in deep water. Okay, this is the eye of the whale. We're going to cut the lids. This is the lower lid because the animal is lying on its back. And this is the upper lid. And so we're going to cut through this, widen that passage, and then cut the eye out. We have to cut it from all of its muscle connections. And then we'll let's see how interesting the whale eye is. Because it's adapted for seeing in water and dealing with high pressures of diving. We're almost there. It's about to come out. Here we go. Now it's hanging on just by the nerve in the back that transmits the image back to the brain. We're going to cut it right down the middle now to show you the anatomy on the inside. This is very thick and therefore very hard to cut. It's really solid with connective tissue. So if I try to really lean on it, I'm going to lean on this and push on it. 
I've got all my weight pushing down on it right now. And all I'm doing is squeezing the blood out of that muscle, but I'm not able to deform that eye. It stays in that shape. It's a very, very sturdy construction. Now, lens is really interesting. Okay, we're gonna put it on the eye for Irish. Yeah. See how much bigger the eye looks now, that letter I? Because the lens is actually magnified. It's still, yeah, it's actually, it's really not a lot bigger than what you see in a cow. It's bigger, but not, not by a lot. A whale's vision is very limited underwater. But when it surfaces, it can see very clearly, which has definite advantages, especially for killer whales hunting their prey. But when whales dive into deep water, they have to rely on other ways of seeing in the dark. Sound waves. They produce sounds from their voice box and, like a submarine sonar, listen for the echoes to bounce back. High frequency pulses can pinpoint the precise location of a single fish, which is particularly useful for toothed whales. Some scientists believe baleen whales may be echolocating with their low frequency sounds they would pass straight through a single fish and travel much greater distances to reflect off larger shoals. This could allow them to detect a school of fish a mile away in only two seconds. As the day draws to a close, the scientists make an exciting evolutionary discovery. You got it, yes! Woo! That's definitely hey! it! <laughs> oh. Oh. Okay, <laughs> nice! <laughs> That's definitely it. It's a vestigial hind leg, the missing link to a life on land. So this is an indication that these animals evolved from four-legged terrestrial animals, but they've made their hind limbs so small that they're embedded into the body wall now. They don't stick out as hind limbs. So we're seeing just a little remnant of the thigh bone. That leaves just one remaining evolutionary question. Why did whales grow so much larger than their closest living relative, the hippo? The answer is that by moving to water, whales freed themselves up from the constraints of gravity. They could become almost indefinitely large. But the great size that makes whales so successful in water becomes their Achilles heel if they get stranded on land. An animal will seek a shallow place to rest because it has no energy if it's sick. But when the tide goes out, gravity becomes a factor and now the weight of the animal crushes its internal organs. It probably died from suffocation, from its own weight crushing. It probably was sick, which is why it came in on the sandbar in the first place. They'll never know exactly what this whale suffered from. But this unfortunate death has given scientists a rare opportunity to explore the anatomy of one of the world's most enigmatic species. It's come out of the ocean. It should be a fish, but it's not. And when you take it apart and you have a look how it's built, it's incredibly similar to you and I. We are both mammals, us and that whale. It's more closely related to a mouse than it is to a fish.